What's good, everybody? In my video today, we're talking about how to properly add radical expressions in a few different scenarios. So when we look at problem number one, we have to make sure that we have the same root for the radicals, and we do. So we could actually break this down and add them together. But before we do, we have to break the radicals down so that they have the same number under the radical. It's the only way that we can add them together. So once we break down our first one, we can use four times five, which breaks down to two radical five. When we go to our second radical, I know that I can use 16 times five to break this down. Just remember that when 16 comes out, we're gonna multiply its square root times its outside number. So we're gonna have eight radical five for our second radical. Third radical now, number 72, radical 72, we could break down as 36 times two. Right, 36 is our perfect square, six radical two, and then we just bring down radical five. Now at this step, guys, we broke everything down. We can't simplify anything anymore. But there's something that we have to understand. So this radical right here, we cannot add to the other three because they do not have the same number under the radical. So now that I'm focusing on the other radicals, all we're gonna do is add the coefficients. So two, eight, that's 10 minus one. We're gonna get nine radical five plus six radical two. This will be our final answer for our first example. We're moving on to problem number two now, guys. And in our second example, they're asking us for the perimeter of a triangle. Just remember that perimeter means we add all the sides together. So the first thing we want to do is just set up our problem, right? All right, so when we set this up now, I know that this radical right here is probably going to stay the same because I can't break down radical 2 anymore. So in our first radical, let's pay attention there. So when I break this down, we're going to get 36 times 2. We know 6 is a perfect square. So when this comes out, our final answer is going to be 12 radical 2. Now for our second one, 8 radical 18, we're gonna use nine times two to break it down. And once we do, our final answer would be 24 radical two. And then like we said before, we're just gonna bring down 16 radical two. So at this step now, guys, we're done with the problem just about. We just have to come up with our final answer. And the final answer is just adding our coefficients Radical is going to stay the same. It acts as a variable. So my final answer, once we add this up, would be 52 radical 2. So final answer for our perimeter for this problem would be this right here. And what we're going to do now is just review cube roots. Because sometimes this could be complicated for students. But if you can remember these two main cubes, we should be in very good shape. So two to the third power is equal to eight, and three to the third power is equal to 27. So these are some perfect cube roots that we have. So when I break down this first radical, this is what we're gonna have. We're gonna have the cube root of eight times the cube root of 11, because this is gonna give us 88. We know eight is a perfect cube, it's gonna come out as two, and once we simplify this radical, we're going to get 8 times the cube root of 11. So just make sure you guys remember your most important cubes, which will be 8 and 27. You're going to see those the most often. Problem number two now, we're going to break this down as the cube root of 27 times 5. And like we said, we know that 27 is a perfect cube. So once we simplify, we're gonna get three times the cube root of five. And just understand when we're talking about cube root, we're just multiplying that base times itself three times. So this is the difference between a cube root and this is the difference between a square root, guys. It's just how many times we multiply the base by itself. 
So next time you have cube roots, you guys are definitely going to kill it. So we're moving on to the next problem, guys. And if you found this video helpful so far as a review, we're going to ask that you to smash the like button for us. Really helps with us getting this video to more students. So this example now, we're talking about distributing or using the distributive property with radicals. So the same thing is going to apply. We're going to take this outside number and multiply it by both terms inside of the parentheses. So once we do, we're going to have 4 radical 6 plus radical 48, right? And from this step here, now we want to see if we could break anything down. 4 radical 6, we can't simplify it anymore. It's going to stay the same. But when we look at radical 48, we could simplify this as 16 times 3. And once we do that, we're going to get 4 radical 3 as an answer. In our next problem now, we're looking at the difference of squares, and there's a key principle we have to remember. And that is when we multiply the difference of squares, our middle terms are going to cancel out. So what does that mean? That means we multiply the first two terms, right? And we're going to multiply the last two terms. So the same rule is going to apply here. So I'll multiply 2 times 2 and get 4, and then radical 3 times radical 3 to get radical 9. But we're not done with the problem yet, guys. A lot of students think we're done. But here's the issue. This is a perfect square, and we could definitely break it down. So this simplifies to 3, and when we rewrite our problem, we're going to have 4 minus 3, which will give us a final answer of 1. So remember, anytime we multiply a radical with the same exact radical, it's going to be that number without the radical. So please make sure you guys remember that important tip. So we're moving on to the last problem of the day, guys. And I hope you guys have enjoyed this video so far in this review. If you have, smash the like button for us. Really helps us to get our videos out to more people. So I want to talk about squaring a binomial with a radical. A common error students see with this is they square the first number and the last number. So our answer would be 4 plus 3, and we would get 7. But this is wrong. When we see an expression like this, what it means is we're going to take it and we're going to multiply it by itself. Basically write it twice and then distribute. So this is what's going on with this problem. After we rewrite it now, we're going to use that principle of FOIL. So I'm going to take 2 and multiply it by both terms to get 4 plus 2 radical 3. And then... I want to go back and do the same thing with the other term, radical 3. So once I multiply, I'm going to get 2 radical 3 again, plus 3. So this is how we properly solve this problem. And then the final step is just to combine our like terms. So we're going to have 4 radical 3 plus 7. And this would be our final answer once we take this binomial to the second power. So please just make sure you guys remember that important tip when we're talking about adding and subtracting radicals. Really hope you found this video helpful today. I'm Professor Peters. Thank you guys so much for joining me today.